Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Today I am going to show you how to make giant crops in the new farm plots of Don't Starve Together. The new system is definitely more complex than what we had prior, but even with a basic understanding, you can farm with an accelerated production and a much lighter resource cost. Now, if you're just looking to do some very basic sustainable farming, then I would recommend my guide on the easiest way to farm, which does not require any thorough understanding of the new mechanics. But if you are ready to go the extra mile and generate some massive crop harvests, then read on. So each crop collects stress points throughout its growth, and how many points it has at the end will determine how many seeds you get back, if any. In order to produce a giant crop, you need a plant that has accumulated no more than a single stress point. This means that the care of this plant needs to be near perfect. So let's talk about how to do that. There are seven factors that can contribute to a plant's total stress. And these factors are weighed every time a plant grows a stage. So when you plant a seed, how do you know what's stressing it out? Good news, there is a tool that provides you with exactly that info the Premier Gardener Hat. Craft a basic Gardener Hat at a science machine, then go to the ruins and upgrade it at a pseudoscience station. This is an invaluable tool for growing giant crops because, unlike the regular hat which will only tell you if a plant is happy or sad, the Premier Hat will tell you precisely what a plant needs to be happy. As you farm crops, be sure to use this hat to research the plants as they grow. Eventually, this will unlock important information in your plant register about each crop's nutrient cycling, water consumption, and seasonal preference. Right-clicking your gardening hat while worn will pull up your registry, and each crop will have an entry with that information. You also want to research all of these fertilizers that you can use to apply nutrients to your farm. All of this is very important for growing giant crops. To get started with a newly planted seed, throw on the gardener hat and left-click to assess the plant's happiness. The first thing it will usually tell you is that it could use some conversation. This is the tending factor and needs to be done at every growth stage. You can talk to them individually, but in larger numbers there are some quicker methods. Blow a pan flute, strap on a one-man band, or drop shell bells nearby and walk past one for a super quick tending. Once you kill a Lord of the Fruit Flies, which will inevitably spawn in your garden, you get a friendly fruit fly that will automatically tend your crops as needed. I am almost completely sure that it does not tend while unloaded, but I'm not 100%. If the plant is thirsty, you need to water the plot. The ground doesn't need to be constantly wet though. Usually one to two uses of a watering can is enough per growth phase, unless you have some extremely thirsty plants like watermelons. In spring, this will often happen automatically because of the rains, and in winter, the ambient temperature will stop a plot's wetness from naturally decreasing, so you don't need to water as frequently. But as a general rule, one watering per phase is safe. If a plant is near a weed, it'll get the killjoy stress. So the minute you see a plant complaining about this, you wanna locate nearby weeds and dig them up. Be more attentive to this in spring, when weeds are more likely to pop up from empty farmland. If you're filling your plots with specific plants, then no worries, but even a weed in a nearby empty plot can affect plant happiness, so be vigilant. A plant that is not in season has zero chance of becoming a giant crop, because it will automatically get four stress points from that factor. So you will not be getting giant asparagus in summer. Sorry, Warly. You can check each plant's preferred seasons in the plant registry. Plants are also a bit claustrophobic, so they will not be happy if you try to squeeze too many into your farm. For that reason, never plant more than 10 crops in a single tile of farm plot and you're good to go. The family factor gets overlooked, but it's very important to remember. It cracks me up that the only other major guide I've seen on giant crops doesn't even mention that you can't get them unless you plant at least four of the same crop close to each other. This totally works in planted rows, and even plants at the end of the row will get the family bonus. The radius is pretty forgiving too. You could plant the rest of a family almost half a tile away and they'd all still get the family bonus. Have I mentioned the grid tiller mod? Yeah, go get it. It's so nice for farming, and it even has configurations for different grids. 
If you only ever plant crops in a 3x3 three three grid, then you can put your 4 crops anywhere on your tile and still get the family bonus. The final possible stress factor is the dreaded nutrients. Your crop needs certain nutrients in the ground in order to grow giant. This varies per plant, and in order to understand your plant's nutrient needs, refer to your plant registry. There's three types of nutrients, and the arrows next to each one tell you how much of that nutrient the plant will have consumed and restored by the end of its growth. Now, if you flip to the fertilizer page of your registry, you will see a list of all fertilizers that you have researched. The arrows here represent the amount of nutrients each application of fertilizer will restore to the soil, and this correlates directly with the consumption rates of each plant. Potato, for instance, consumes two arrows worth of manure, so either a single guano or two pieces of manure will completely fertilize that plant. From this, you can gather that the majority of plants are quite easy to fertilize. The most expensive compost-consuming plants will only need four rot to make happy, and both rot and manure are very easy to collect. Honestly though, the best way to provide nutrients for your crops is with balanced crop combinations. These are groups of plants that, when grown together, will automatically provide for each other's nutrient needs. The easiest example of this is tomato and potato, which create a beautifully balanced net output of nutrients. Several triple pair combinations also exist, one of Warley's personal favorites being onion, pepper, and garlic. With these though, you're going to need multiple farm plots to avoid overcrowding, with a minimum of 12 planted crops in order to still get the family bonus for all of them. I do intend to make a dedicated guide on nutrients and fertilizers because there are many different ways to approach this requirement. But for our purposes today, we're just going to add a few pieces of fertilizer to the soil until our hat tells us the plants are happy. And once we get that notification, then you're good to go until the next growth phase. At that point, just tend and water again, then reassess a couple of the plants just to see if they need anything else. Rinse and repeat until your babies grow up. There's actually very little guesswork to be made here. As long as you have the right equipment, the plants will tell you what they need to get big and strong, and as long as you provide those things, they will reward you with giant crops. Believe me, this may seem like a lot of information, but in practical application, you don't need to constantly keep all these factors in mind. Most of them will be automatically fulfilled anyway, like season, overcrowding, and weeds. As long as you plant families, keep your crops tended and watered, and occasionally add fertilizer, you are most likely going to end up with several giants. Just keep your premier gardener hat nearby and let the plants tell you what they need to be happy. They will do the rest. That's it! I hope that you found this info useful and that it might encourage you to give farming a try if you had any trepidation. Credits again go to Quartzbeam, Zeklo, Lachnish, and Electroly for their incredible contributions on this topic, which I will link in the description. Let me know in the comments if you need any clarification, and stay tuned for a more comprehensive guide on tackling nutrient balance and fertilizers. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.